in, I'm just lying this on the water. Every time it goes in, the bite is instant. Loose feeding, just a few squats, about 20 squats, loose feeding over the top of that ground bait. And then each time, say you get a boat coming through, you can actually, what you can do, straight in again, look at that. Solid, they're lined up there on that ground bait. Every time a boat comes through, just pot in another foot of ball of ground bait to consolidate the fish again. And whiz back in. Small roach at the moment, but as usual, they'll get bigger. That's a nice little fish. Typical canal fish, beautiful condition. Lovely. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Probably only about 12 grams, that for little roach. Yeah, they seem to be all about the same size now. I've arrived there. I mean, if they haven't, we can always top up. But it's always a good idea to keep having a look. I mean, if there's loads of big fish there, then of course we want to keep at that. I'm here today on the Grand Union Canal at Leighton Buzzard just above Leighton Buzzard and uh, it's below the, the Globe Public House. It's a good stretch, a well-known stretch, loads of people fish it. It's got a remarkable amount of colour, I mean it's autumn now and it's really got a lovely colour, the canal. I'm looking to fish three lines. You know, when you, when you come to a canal, how you have to, to attack it is you have to look what you can extract from each part of the canal because it's always difficult fishing. So today what I'm going to do is Look to catch some roach on bread punch at sort of four or five metres. And then further out, perhaps two thirds of the way across the canal, something like 10 or 11 metres, catch roach again on squats and I'll show you how to feed and what to do. And then hopefully I'm going to have a far bank line for my bigger fish, perhaps the odd skimmer or the odd big roach, right against the sort of far bank, bank foliage. So I'm going to three lines try to catch fish from everywhere, but the first thing you have to do is actually plumb the depths. Find out what depth, what line you're going to fish. Because you need to feed every line, so I'm going to plumb the lines, find out where to feed, and then we'll go through mixing ground baits and feeding. Little plummet, of course. And I'm looking to fish this punch line just over the first shelf, where the canal it goes down, probably only about sort of four and a half foot deep in the middle, but I'm looking to where it sort of goes down and drops down. If I, if I start off here, sort of at, say I'm starting something like four meters out, you can see the canal. As I go out a little bit further, you'll see the canal actually start to go slightly deeper, slightly deeper. I'm looking to where it just levels off on this side. So there it's going deeper and deeper. Almost there, slightly deeper again. And just about there is, is, is sort of the bottom corner of the canal. That's where you would expect fish to be waiting. Just on that sharp crease in the canal. So that's our line. It's five metres out, that's going to be the bread punch attack. And it's necessary to, to, to feed every line, so that, you, that if you feed every line and fish another line, the line that's being rested collects fish. So it gives fish a chance to get on that feed, and then when you go on that other line, the fish will be confidently eating. And then you can switch also from one line to another. Just, you catch more fish then. Just exploit the canal to its full. Now it is autumn, as I said, it's still reasonable conditions though. And, and a, a goodish time of the year to fish the canal because particularly this one in the summer, there's a lot of boat traffic. Now the boat traffic is just now winding down, which will enable us to actually fish without too much problems with the with the actual boats going across the top of the feed and spreading it everywhere. So autumn and winter on canals you can get some good fishing as long as you pick the right days. Now I'm going to look at the squat line. This is sort of the line that I'm looking at two thirds of the way across and this time I'm looking not to fish the boat channel. I've, I've, I'm fishing at this side. On the, I'm looking where the, where the actual canal starts to go up. The gradient, the slope. This is usually a clean part of the canal because it's sloping. 
leaves and that get washed down to the middle, the deeper parts, or the far bank. But on this sloping bit, it's usually very clean, and this is where fish congregate. So I'm looking to plumb up at, I would have thought, something like, 11 metres, that's what my experience tells me on this canal, and the far bank slope will be far greater. Let's have a look. If I drop in here, now you can see, look at that, um, that's at about nine and a half, ten metres. The float's going under the water, but if I push the pole further across the canal, then you'll see the slope of the canal, it start to gradually, gradually come up. As I push it across, it's a little bit shallower there, the float's almost showing there. And if I go to the full extent, there, which is about, probably 10 and a half, 11 metres, it's perfect, there. Now the punch and the squat, I'm looking to fish at dead depth. That is the plummet and the flow exactly at the depth, not over depth, exactly what you call dead depth. The float bristle just showing as the plummet hits the bottom. And that will keep sloping up there on that far bank like it will keep sloping up. But that's a good place to catch roach where the canal's going up and also on this inside line. So that's two lines we've covered. And the last line will be hopefully a, a sort of, on canals you can never tell, but there's always an odd chance of a big bonus fish. So our last line will be right across with some worm and caster, leave it there and hopefully a big roach, skimmer or even a carp will settle on this and, and during the day, while you're catching roach, you can keep having a look at that far line to see if there's any fish on it. And quite often it works, because you can leave it, say you're fishing a five hour match, you can probably leave it three or four or five hours, almost five hours, and then go and have a look. And quite often, you'll get a fish right at the death, right at the last instant. So let's have a look now at our far bank line which will be, the canal is, this canal here is almost, probably almost 13 metres wide, so I've picked a, a rig to fish almost at 13 metres, not quite into the vegetation because it's very, 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 very shallow, right tight across, so I'm going to try and fish in two foot six inches of water. Big fish creep along the far banks of canals. We look to go across, fish tight across. Oh, I do love this new pole of mine, it's a beauty. There. So right across. And I'm going to cup in some worm and caster on that line. Now that line, I'm going to fish over depth. If you see, have a look, see where the plummet's going in there, plummet's just hit bottom now, and I'm just over a float depth, probably something like eight inches over depth, there. And that's the depth I'm going to fish on that line. About eight inches over depth with caster or worm, I'll swap about with, with different baits. But that's established where your feed is going to go, work out where the three lines are, and have your equipment ready to, to, to actually work between the three different positions on the canal. Now for my punch line, I'm just using normal Van der Nijn punch crumb. Straight out of a bag, I've already added some water with it because it takes a little bit of time. You need to add water, leave it, let it dry out a little bit and add some more because it's, it's pure bread and it does it take quite a bit of mixing. You have to be very careful with it. I think I've got the consistency just about right, and I need now to put it through a riddle just to get any big lumps out. I've only used about half a bag here. We're canal fishing. You don't need a massive amount of crumb. So I'm just running it through the riddle there, 
And this is, this is a squat riddle, it's a very fine, remember when you're canal fishing, everything you do has to be, you know, much finer than your normal rivers or lakes. And I'm rubbing it just a little bit through. Look at that, nearly all gone through, just one or two big lumps. We'll discard those, plonk them out of the way. And we're left with just a nice, just a beautiful, soft textures, textured white sort of crumb there. One little squeeze and it will grip together, but it will sort of hit the top and then explode and attract the fish in. That's the punch crumb. Finished. As easy as that. The other one, this mix is for my squat line. Now with this, it's a mixture of 50%, it's Van der Nine, it's a super match and 50% super lake. So half of each, I've mixed them together. Once again, you need to take some time, get some water on the dry contents, mix it in, let it dry out a little bit, add a little bit more water. Be very, very careful about the amounts of water that you put into the ground bait. And this mix, I'm looking to be fairly dry so I can squeeze it and it will sort of just hold together, sink and then explode. So I don't want anything too stodgy. Remember this is a canal and you do need to, to be very, very careful about everything you do. May need just a touch more water in this, so I'll just a touch more water. Whiz it round and then just so sort of squeeze it and then it comes to pieces very quickly. So not too wet. Remember the drier that you mix a ground bait the drier that you mix it, then the quicker it will break down in water. So the drier the mix, the quicker it breaks down. The wetter that you mix it, then the longer it stays in one lump. So be very careful about it. So once again, through the riddle, I've probably done too much here. I've done almost a kilo, and it's, it's probably much too much for the canal. And rubbing through any of the big lumps, just discard those, leave those out. If I just do this one lot, that'd be plenty. I haven't, I'm not going to riddle it all. What we're doing today is just cupping in ground bait so there'll be ample there, really, for what I need to do. Cup in and then loose feed over the top. Rub this through. There, like that. It doesn't take long. Once again, once you've put ground bait through a riddle, it's just a different animal. What you do is the, the sort of the wetter lumps, which are the lumpier pieces, you break those down and they mix in with the drier pieces and then you get a really consistent mix. There you are, spot on, ready for feeding. Now this, for feeding, is, is the most important tool in the canal angler's armoury. It's a pole cup. It means that you can feed extremely accurate at every line. Because it, it finishes exactly the same length as your pole and where your lines end, the bait is going to exactly the right position. And it is important when, you've, when, when, when it's very delicate, difficult fishing that everything is extremely accurate. Now, I'm going to start with the near side line, the punch line, with two balls of punch crumb. Just cup them in. Squeeze a crumb that we've mixed up into a ball. Plop it in the cup and you'll, you'll find that when you actually put it out, it'll sort of semi-float before it sinks. It waits till it absorbs water. Pick a marker on the far bank, make sure that you know where this bait's going in is where you're actually going to be fishing. And watch for any toe on the canal, but that, that'll be taken up. And then just tip it in. Well, look, pick the far bank marker and tip in that one, you'll find it'll just, there it goes. And it goes down and leaves a cloud as it's dropping through the water. And I want to put two balls on there, another one exactly the same, so come in with the pole cup. There. Now this is something which doesn't happen on the canals always, but watch it, when you're feeding, the canal has actually just started to move. Now, if the canal races, then you've got to wait until it slows down. It means a boat has come through a lock. So you don't want to be cupping in 
as the canal's racing. So we're just going to wait for one moment, let the canal stop, let the water stop, and then we'll continue cupping in. Now I'm just waiting for this boat to go by. This was the actual, as this went through the locks, this is what caused the canal to flow. But boats, really, they are the mainstay of the canal. We do need them. They impart colour into the canal, which is always good for catching fish. But he's chugging through the middle of the canal, nice and steadily, there, and doing no harm whatsoever. But it, what, what it'll do, it stirs up, gets a bit of colour, gets the fish feeding. They need movement. Just wait until the canal just settles, then I'm going to put this second ball of punch crumb in. Getting it ready. Just waiting for that canal. It's already it's settled. Another ball of this crumb. Loads more colour in the canal. Get exactly where the last one went. Have a look, drop it in. There, just drop it in. It just floats for a little while and then it'll suddenly, it will sink and go down. There it goes. Go on. That's our first line taken care of. And now we need to go on to the middle line, sort two thirds of the way across, which is going to be the squat line. Once again, it's the only way to get accurate. You can throw the ground bait, but we only need, say, three balls on that line. So it's not necessary to throw it in. You may as well get extremely accurate and feed it in with a pole cup. Notice how I've got two pole rollers as well, which makes it easy for me to balance the, the actual pole itself. Little trick I'm going to do with this, once again, a ball of ground bait. Squeeze it, squeeze it fairly firmly because I've mixed it dry. Now the actual squats, the, the actual bait that you need in that area, because this is going to be my squat line for little roach, these, just put them in the cup loose. You've got a solid ball of ground bait. It's not a deep canal. So put a few squats in the cup. They can trickle down slowly, attracting the fish. The ground bait will go down and sort of home the fish into one central area. So carefully feed that out now. And round. Same again, pick a far bank marker. Drop this ground bait exactly where you're going to fish. There. And just cup it in exact length. There, the squats, everything will come out. Now with that ground bait, once again, it's a very dry mix. Floats for a second and then goes under. But also a, a big cloud as it goes the squats exactly where I want it. I'm going to put three balls in that area. So back again, feed three balls. At the start, that can be resting. Repeat the procedure, squeeze the ground bait, good squeeze, pinch of squats, loose squats. And what can be happening now, we're going to fish that punch line first. And of course, while we're fishing the punch line, this line out here is resting. The fish can actually settle on it, start to feed on this line. Another ball in. You'll see it will actually float on the canal first. Float on the canal and then sink under. I'm tipping a few squats in. There it goes, straight down. But it's sort of exploding as it goes. That's the important thing about canals, is exploiting every line of the canal, every part of it, catching different fish in different areas. Same again, so I'm putting three balls, a fair bit. Normal fishing, you'd probably be on the punch line for the first hour. So, you know, this will have an hour to settle. And this should really normally be your most productive line apart from, of course, your big fish line, if any big fish come on the, on, on the actual far line. 
We're in once again. Just tip it over. Look how perfectly you can be with that cup. Tip it over. See the squats going in? There's the ground bait. Just floating for a few seconds. Don't worry about that. And then sinking. That means it will break up quickly when it hits the bottom. And the last line will be our worm and caster. Now with this, what I'm going to do is just one cup full, just some worms, a few worms, a few worms and some casters. Casters are a great bait for actually holding fish. Casters, tip beautiful canal bait. They will lay on the bottom. I'm going to cut them in across on the far bank. They will lie on the bottom and be resting there for as long as they need to, you know, and we can keep going, having a look, see if there's any big fish arrive. So, chop worm and casters, a few more in there. I'm going to whiz that right out across onto the far side of the canal. Only one cup full, that's all. There. And I've picked a spot on the far bank that I'm going to fish. I'll need to add my two sections on. Now this pole cup, because it's actually fixed on the top, it doesn't tend to want to tip over. All the earlier models used to be fixed on the bottom of the cup and they could easily tip over, but this one is absolutely perfect. It's a Drennan Pole Master cup. It comes in three sizes, but it's, it's really perfect for this sort of fishing. Now once again, I've picked a spot on the canal where I'm going to feed. So take note of that, so you actually know where to go back to in two or three hours. When you, when you go across the canal again, you must know where you've actually fed. Well, let's just tip those in now, tip the contents in. There, here they come. There's the casters, everything coming out. That will settle onto the canal. Good, we can leave that, leave that alone, forget about it. Go back and look at that later. Let's have a look at the rig that we're first going to use on this bread punch line. Now, because we're on a canal, I'm using a very, very fine elastic, number two elastic that's ultra soft. Ultra soft, really is. Comes out very easy. With a tiny micro connector and the float, this is one of my favourites. It's called a adrenaline pinky float. But it's just a perfect shape for these canals. We're sort of slightly rounded body. You know when the canal runs a little bit, you can just hold the float a teeny bit. Just above there, you probably have trouble seeing it. I've got one small shot, a number 11 shot, and that's what you call a back shot. If it's a teeny bit of wind or you want perfect presentation, you can put this one little shot above the float. It just helps to hold this line down behind the float to give you better presentation. My main line is a number 10, 010 Browning Senatan. It's probably about a pound and a half in breaking strain. Now this float itself has got a little tiny carbon stem and a thin cane bristle. It's just lovely for this canal work. Working down to the bottom end of the rig, what I've got here, I've got, in a row, I've got five number 10 shot. All together, that sort of acts like an Olivet. And these shot are actually Preston slip shot. They're a sort of a coated with a, with a slip ingredient to stop the actual lead corroding, because you can use lead up to number eight shot, so it's to stop this lead corroding, they're actually bluish in color and they stop where lead would normally go white and crowd after it while you don't get any of this and you can pull the shot easily along the line it moves very very easily no problem so i've got the option of actually spreading these shot out moving further down below this this bulk of shot i've got three number 13 shot very 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 tiny shot one two three and one of them I've actually put on the hook length. I've actually put one shot on the hook length so I can move it closer to the hook or further away, depending on how many bites we're getting. 
The hook length itself is 0.06. That's a normal canal line, 0.06, which is about a pound in breaking chain, so very fine. And then the hook going down to the hook, tiny hook, a number 22 B511. Just a little tiny, and it's a silver hook. I, I favour silver hooks for bread punch. Remember, white bread and, and, and silver hooks. They, they go together quite well, the same as squats, whatever. So that's the actual rig itself. And let's go on to what we're going to be using today. Bread punch, which is a slice of medium slice bread. Fairly thin, medium slice. I've, I've, I've actually cooked that in the microwave for about 20 seconds, just to make it a bit tacky. And a little tiny punch. Punch sizes, you could you, they vary quite a bit. I've picked a fairly small, probably, oh, I don't know what this is, probably a two mil punch. It's just a tiny punch, this one. And I start with this and then see how many fish I'm going to catch, where they're coming, and perhaps work onto a bigger punch. And the operation's easy. Let's see if we can catch some fish, shall we? The operation's easy. Press the punch in, hook in, and you actually remove that little pellet of bread. And it can sit on the hook. When it goes into the water, it actually really does swell up. It looks tiny there. As soon as it goes into the water, you find it'll just swell up, it'll expand, and make it really attractive and enticing for the fish. I wonder how long it's going to take us to catch one. Let's have a look. I've already fed on that line. I've picked a marker so I know exactly where I've fed this punch. Let's drop the float in. And of course the float is directly on the end of the pole in line with it so that you can't go wrong. See it settling. Take a few seconds just to settle. There's a telltale shot's taking up. And it's there. Now we're just waiting for a bite. Beautiful. And that bit of bread is just off bottom. We're already actually gone in with our punch, crumb, created an area where the fish will feed, and now we're looking for the fish to come and take. There, there's the start of the bite, a little bite then. First indications, the fish has got hold of that bread. It's actually had two or three goes at taking that piece of bread. And although I've only put a tiny piece on, it still can't actually take it yet. Bread's still there. Bread comes off the hook very easily, so it's a good idea just to lift it and check it, especially if you see the float's been tapped. And there it goes again, another little dig, there it goes again, and it's gone, and we've got it. Our first fish, it did take some time to actually take it, and it is a tiny one. I predicted right, I said it would be small. Look at that, that is tiny. Oh, it's a gudgeon. Lovely little gudgeon, but it was really was Look at that. <laughs> really was pulling and tugging. It didn't know what to do. But this is a, a typical canal fish. Just a very, very small gudgeon. Probably weighing mm, maybe half an ounce if I'm lucky. There, look at him. Just a lovely little fish. Unhook him, put him away. And that took bread. That's not the fish I'm looking for. I'm looking for roach, of course. So. That's probably why it took a long while to take it. Let's see if we can catch some roach. All the time while I'm fishing punch, I'm flicking out squats on that, what I consider is going to be the main line of attack today, which is like two thirds across the canal. You're, on that, that's on our squat line. There's, you, you're always more likely to catch larger fish there. Because it's a cross, canals are, are sort of fairly narrow, fish are shy, and you would always expect, oh, I missed that bite, it was a good bite too, and I missed it. Come in again. You'd always expect to actually catch fish sort of on that, on that far line. 
I've just missed that last bite. Shall we have a look out on that longer line? Because I'm sure the float's going to go straight away with a quality fish. Let's just have a look. We'll put this one away. We can still leave that to settle. We've, we've been, you know, a little bit of time allowing that swim out there to settle. So there's still plenty of opportunity. We can still leave that and come back to it. Let's have a look on this squat line to see if the fish are there. I'm sure they will be. So single squat. Now the actual squat rig, I'll run through that with you. Very, very, very similar at the top. I've got a number two elastic, the same as, as on the bread punch rig. Number two, very, very fine elastic, nice and soft. And then coming down, once again, to my, what I said was my favourite float, this little Drenham pinky float, but this size is, is 0.2 of a gram. The bread punch was 0.4 of a gram, this is 0.2 of a gram, four number 12s. And then coming further down to the actual, once again, I've got a little bulk of shot there. If I can show them to you. Little bulk, four number 11 shot there, all together. And then below it, I've got four number 13 shot, little tiny shot. So I want this bait to fall slowly. I want it to bulk up and then fall slowly over the last little bit of water. So I've got four little shot there. 010 center town main line, 06 hook length. 22B511, so exactly the same hook line, everything, except the float's a little bit smaller than the bread punch. Single squat, I've been loose feeding squats, put the ground bait in, plus cupping some squats in in ground bait. So let's have a look. Whiz out there, see if we can catch one straight away. I'm sure we will. Try and catch some fish. Straight on this line that's been rested. I would have thought the reaction will be virtually instant. Lay the float on the water, right over where I've put that ground bait in. One or two little leaves on the surface, but they're not too bad. I'm going to also flick a few squats in as well. Remember, I've watched that marker where I actually put those balls of ground bait in some squats and watch the float because quite often the actual roach will take on the drop. The float's still going through the water and settling, take a little while before it settles. There, there it goes. In fact, the fish actually got hold of that as it was running down. Probably a small roach, but just intercepted it on its way through. It's running there. Once again, when, once, as soon as the boat comes through the canal, the actual canal will run. That whizzing through. Doesn't matter, you can quite often catch fish when it's running. And stills movement into it. He's whizzing away down the canal. Back up onto my feed again. As soon as a boat comes along, then you must obviously take your pole in. Don't let, don't let the boat plough through it. If you catch a big fish on, you're in trouble. If I catch a little fish, I can lift it straight up in the air, but a big fish, I can be in real trouble at the moment. I actually had a bite then as it was coming through. Pull my pole round, get out of the way of the boat. And this is one of the, obviously this is a, a boat user that's aware of fishermen. He's coming through nice and steady, there's no problem. Morning. There. Not disturbing the swim at all. 
perfect. It came through the middle of the canal, didn't disturb the swim, and I can go back over. It's another reason why you don't fish the main boat channel. Fish both sides, and you've more of a chance of, of catching fish then, without them being disturbed. It's amazing how much movement that imparts into the water. There are straight away, even after that boat's gone, I'm into my first roach, lovely. Nice fish, actually took the actual bait on the drop. I've lost that one. Slipped the hook, probably not quite so confident because of the boat, but it whizzed. The, it was instant, as soon as that boat had gone, the bite was instant. It's actually, this is what happens a lot in fishing, and I, and I don't know an answer for it. It's actually pushed the squat round the hook. See the bait is damaged, but it's pushed the squat over the point of the hook, so when you strike, you don't get the real penetration that you should do, and that's a, that's a common, common occurrence, but I don't know an answer for it. It happens lots of times, where the fish actually blows the bait, blows the bait and pushes it round the hook. I'm into another one straight away. Well, it's only a small fish, but typical squat fishing canals, little roach, across sort of two thirds of the way across, and it's usually all action. I'm guessing this is a small roach. Yeah, there it is, lovely little fish. Yeah, in good condition. Still got the squat hanging out of its mouth. Let me have a see if I can show you. Still got the squat. This is quite a lively little fellow. Keep still. Still got the squat actually wriggling and out of its mouth, look. Didn't take long to catch that, did it? So it was there straight away. The because we've rested the peg, the fish are there, waiting. Lovely. This is terrific fishing. These, uh, these fish are really worked up on the squat line. Notice how I've had to put my pole rollers today when you're on canals and working in restricted distance behind you, then what I've done is I've got two pole rollers virtually at the same angle, at right angles to me, just lying along the canal. It's a little bit difficult to ship back, but at least you know when you get bikers, you get people walking along, you don't have to keep pulling the pole out of the way. Once you get used to it, it's not so bad. But it's a fisher chuck now on this squat line, so it's good. Now we're fishing, actually I'm fishing quite, say within about 100 yards of some power cables. Remember to always look up when you're fishing. Always look up, make sure you've got no overhead power lines above you. They can be dangerous, but I'm about 100 yards from some, and really you don't want to get much closer to them. I mean, I'm just lying this on the water. Every time it goes in, the bite is instant. Loose feeding, just a few squats, about 20 squats, loose feeding over the top of that ground bait. And then each time, say you get a boat coming through, you can actually, what you can do, straight in again, look at that, solid. They're lined up there on that ground bait. Every time a boat comes through, just pot in another ball of ground bait to consolidate the fish again. I whiz back in small roach at the moment, but as usual, they'll get bigger. That's a nice little fish. Typical canal fish, beautiful condition. There, pop him in the net straight away. All that, you have to work hard with this squat fishing. Work hard, watch the bite. I usually take it on the drop. I'm loose feeding, and normally the bite's on the drop. That's why I've got these little droppers, one of them on the hook length, so that I can detect the bite very, very early. Straight in again, lay the bait on the water. Perfect little float, these. Just shut up straight away. Stand up. Feed. Then watch the flow in again straight away, instant action. This is a slightly bigger fish. 
terrific fishing this. This is canal fishing at its best. And that elastic, number two elastic, really soft, means that you don't bump the fish off. Means you get most of them in. Slightly bigger fish, this one. Yeah, lovely. About an ounce and a half. Beautiful little fish. There, yeah, lovely. Gorgeous little thing. Look at that. Real plump canal. Grand Union canal roach. Really plump. Lovely looking thing. Once again, the squat's still sticking out of his mouth. Another boat just chugging by. And that boat's gone right over my feed line, so just got to wait till it settles and then I'll put another cup in. In fact, I'll do it now, put another cup in there, but you can bet your life the fish will be straight back on it. Boats don't hurt canals at all. And I'll put that down, another cup in, just like I did earlier. Another cup full of ground bait, just a few squats in it, loose. Squeeze that ground bait, that ball of ground bait, squeeze it tight, it's a nice dry mix, squeeze it tight into the cup, few squats, boat's just gone by, you want to consolidate those fish again, we were catching one after the other, one after the other, get them back into our feed area again, and this is why the pole pot's so good. Whiz another cup out, flop it in and then go straight back over it, and the fish should be there again, even though that boat went straight over our line. There. Squats as well. Lovely. Instant action. As soon as it goes in, the float buries. As soon as it goes in, you know, this, this sort of rate, you can catch two a minute. Instant action. Lovely little fish. Beautiful. Perfect. Probably only about 12 grams, that one. No, maybe an ounce. But... But gorgeous fish, little plump, lovely. Squat is, is, a, is a very, very good bait. That's what I like to hear, that badoosh when they go in the water. Even, even an ounce fish makes a lot of noise. And the angler next to you looks up. See what you've got. It's a single squat on this 22 hook. Quite a nice size hook, silver hook again, that B511. Single squat, and we're looking to take the fish on the drop. Just looking when the bait settles through the water, watching. Because of the loose feed as well, the fish will be coming up. Water's a lovely colour. Just watching the float. Loose feed of just a few, 20, 20 or so squats over the top. And just watching. Sometimes the float will just run along, sometimes it will bury. Other times it will lift. Now yeah, that was a little, that was a little sharp jag, but once again, immediately into the fish. Virtually, I don't think any of the bait is getting to the bottom. There's so many fish there. Certainly is a tremendous part of the canal, this. And another beautiful little roach. Yeah, they seem to be all about the same size now. But great fish. Yeah, look at that. Real hungry little fellow, that. Oh, jumped in my maggots. Back in. I think that squat's good enough to go back straight out again with. If the bait's not damaged at all, we'll leave it on. No need to change it. When they're going mad, no need to change it at all. You can go out. Just make sure you get your line right that you're fishing. Watch that float, you'll see it'll just stand up nicely. Take your time, and while the float's settling, then you can flick your few squats over the top. Then just watch for the action on your float. They are, there it goes, straight away in again. They really are feeding confident. Look at that elastic, number two elastic. Nice and soft, so you can swing this pole around and run it parallel along the bank. And another beautiful little fish. Oh, they're going mad today. Mind you, it's a lovely day, sun shining. Beautiful day for autumn, November. Yeah. Look at him, perfectly formed. Gorgeous little fish. All action, all busy. This is what we like. 
but mainly due to that concentration of ground bait, leaving the swim alone for three quarters now while you fish that inner line, that punch line, just leaving, leaving them alone and then the fish are settled out there. Let's have a look at our last rig, the one for the far bank, slightly bigger fish, perhaps we're hoping for some bigger roach, or maybe an odd skimmer, bream. I've gone up a little bit with the elastic, not too much, a number three elastic through two sections, still fairly soft, but it will take like a two pound fish. It takes a little bit of time to get it in, but remember we might only be catching half pound roach, so the elastic can't be too strong because we'll be bumping the fish. I've still kept an 010 main line, but increased the hook size. I'll come to that in a second. The float is different. It's a Drennan carp float. It's got a larger bristle because we're fishing on the far bank of the canal. You want to be able to see what you're doing. And it's got a big diameter bristle so you can actually drag the piece of worm or drag the cast on the bottom without the float going under. You know, when the float goes under, it wants to be a fish. So a bigger antenna, a nice one that you can see. Once again, I've got a small shot above the float, which is called a back shot. Number, number 11 back shot, 0.2 of a gram float with a carbon, carbon actual stem, cane, nice thick cane bristle, 010 main line. And then a little bunch of shot there, same again, the Preston slip shot. They're all nicely, nicely tucked together, beautiful and neat. This is a difference on this rig, because I'm using a big bait and I expect to get a good bite, no lift bites, I expect the float to go under. I've just put a one number 12 shot just above where I've got the hook length, the hook length not there. And then I've got a hook length of approximately 10 inches and this hook length is 0.08, so slightly heavier than what we've been fishing for the smaller roach. 08, and the hook size slightly bigger again, a 20. Still not a massive hook, but if you catch lots of fish, then you can upgrade your hook size. Start a little bit careful, depending on where you're going, and then you can upgrade it. Look for getting some bites. Even on a big bait, look for getting some bites first. Now I'm going to start with a small piece of worms, because the chances are we could hook a perch, maybe a roach, or a bream. You know, you can, on a piece of worm, it's a very, very natural bait, and we can catch sort of virtually anything. And the worms I've got are a mix sort of, they're dendrobeaners, but in amongst them are some nice reds, and, and I love to use a small red piece of red worm on the hook. So I actually look through my worm baits, and there is a beautiful little red worm. I think this is the best bait for bream, anything really. Red worm are, are far better than dendrobeaners. They seem to be softer. I'm just going to nip that, not quite in half, just a small piece. Just going to nip it with my fingers. Hope you're not squeamish. So I've got a small piece of worm. And I actually put the hook through the broken part of the worm. Just hook the hook sort of thread it partly down through the broken part of the worm, bring it out so that it is sort of hooked on the broken part. The fish, because where you break the worm, you get this nice, the smell of the juices. The fish will always try to get that piece in their mouth. They won't try and pull that end off and look, and it's still wiggling and crawling about. Lovely piece of red worm. That's what we're gonna try and hopefully catch a fish with. Let's go out and see if any have arrived on the peg yet. Sometimes they might not be there straight away. I might have to cup in again. You can never tell, but I'm going to go and have a look, see if I can catch one. I know exactly where I've cut that worm in. And also remember, because it's on the far bank of the canal, it hasn't been subjected to all the boat traffic. You know, the boats have kept well away from there. Which means, if there is anything there, they should be pretty settled. And what I'm going to do is 
Once I've, I've gone over where I've put, put the chopped worm and the caster in, drop my worm on there, and then work the float around a little bit as well. Once it, once it settles, just pull it one way and then the other. Let it settle first. Float settled now. Particularly if there's perch around, they love any sort of movement. Quite often on these canals you can catch big, really big fish. Just moving it, pulling it. The thing is, if you don't get an in a fairly instant reaction, you don't have to waste time on it. Just go out, try that far bank line. If there's no signs of any fish there, you still kept your other two lines going. So I'm feeding this squat line in the middle still. And what I'll do is if there's no reaction, then I'll put a little bit more bait out there, ready for later. As I said earlier, sometimes it can take two or three hours. Oh, and there's a fish on it. Yeah, we've got a fish straight away on that big line. It's not a big fish, but it's a bigger fish than we were catching. Looks like a perch, just dragging it along. Yes, yeah, little perch. Typical. I mean, it could have been a pound fish, it could be anything. But you can see how you can, you can extract fish from all parts of the canal. Anyway, I'll just bring it round to the side. This, this would be the sort of fish that I'd expect to catch. Lovely little perch. I think I'll net that one. It's just only a small fish, but I think I'll just slide the net under it. See the stripes on it? See the worm hanging out of its mouth? Only a tiny little fish, probably two or three ounces. Three ounces, perhaps. But that's exactly what you'd expect to catch. There. Hooked perfectly in the lip, just by moving it, wiggling it about. And while you take fish off of each line, you rest the other line, so when you go back on it, there's more fish there waiting for you. Don't exploit too many fish from one area. Three lines, swap it around, and keep taking fish from every line. Different species. Let's use my disgorger on that one. He's hooked just inside the mouth. Gorgeous little fish. There, plonk into the net. Oh, lovely. Canella just started to run back to the left and I, I thought I'd, I'd slip a caster on because I've, I've been cupping in worm and caster, so you've got an alternative. I slipped the caster on the hook and it's buried straight away. Slightly better quality fish too. Slightly better rope. I'm still just about to swing it because I've got a 20 hook on. There, just about swing it. A lovely little roach on cast or on the far bank over that sort of chop worm line. Just another line that you can actually go on if you want to. Actually smash the caster, look and suck, suck the juices out of the caster. Let me see if I can twist that round. Just suck the juices out of the caster, bitten half the caster off as it ran away with it. There. Lovely. Should we try it again? We'll just see if we can catch one more on that line. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Beautiful fishing. <laughs> Another good roach. That elastic's working ever so well. Not a massive fish, but probably six ounces. All the time it tops your weight up. Still leaving that middle line alone. Another lovely caster roach. Catching these on the canal. I'll just net this one. There, yeah, slip the net under him. Little dumpy fish. Gorgeous. This is one of the fish we've come for, roach on the canal. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Another nice fish. 
Mm. Cast is working well. Just sneaking fish off one line and then back onto another, but I think the day's almost coming to an end. Another, it's a good cast of ropes, this, I, I should think. Let's whiz back and have a look at it. Yeah, lovely cast of roach. Oh, I wish I could stay longer, but the light will soon be going. Yeah, look at that beautiful roach. They're always much bigger fish that you catch on caster. Yeah, look at that beautiful fish. Probably five, five ounce, probably. But I think that's a good one to finish up on. Once again, you can see where it's completely smashed the caster. Look at that, smashed the caster completely, pushed it out. But gorgeous fish, probably five or six ounces. Perfect condition. Yeah, look at that. I think it's a good one to finish up with. Let's have a look and see what we've caught. Well, that was a fantastic little session of roach fishing. It, it's amazing on these canals what you can catch, you know, fishing between two and two or three lines. It's amazing exactly what you can catch. So get the fish to the front of the net, in the water, make sure you get them right to the front before you release them. But just fishing three lines and all these lovely little canals. There's a few perch in there as well, but these canal roach and perch, it's amazing how many you can catch. Beautiful little fish, look at them. Gorgeous, nice little net. Probably six pound or more, but it's a lovely little session. There. Let's put them back safely away. One or two casts are roaching amongst them. That's just a typical example of canal fishing. Fishing three different lines, some on punch, some on squat, crossed on caster and worm. And it's amazing how many fish you can catch. Hope you've learned something from this video. I really enjoyed it.